Uh, in this current series, we're talking about the process. Uh, and for my subject matter today, I want to talk about the process of elimination. Say it for me. Say the process of elimination. Uh, type it in the comment section and say it to somebody in the house. The process of elimination. Uh, the process in which we as Christians go through sometimes uh, introduce something that we call spiritual warfare. The spiritual warfare tells us that something uh, is literally shaking uh, in an invisible world that we don't have control of. Uh, the Bible also teaches us uh, that man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. And so the word of God is there for us to read, is there for us to study. But yet we as Christians sometimes stray away from the word of God. Uh, if you have your Bibles, if you would go to Ephesians, the sixth chapter. Thank you, Jesus. Uh, and, and, and my key verse is number 12, but I'm going to start uh, at verse number 10. Uh, and it reads, finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. Verse 12, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities against powers, against the rules over the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Uh, verse number 14 says, Stand therefore, having your loins grown up with truth and the breastplate of righteousness. I want to go back to verse uh, number 12. It says, For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against spiritual wickedness, against principalities, against the rules of the darkness. I want to also just tag John 10.10 10 in this. It says, the thief cometh not but to steal, kill, and to destroy. But Jesus said, I come that you might have life and that more abundantly. Father, I pray today, I pray that this uh, message reach uh, the person that it needs to reach. I pray that, that I would decrease, that you would increase. I pray that everything that needs to happen in this season happens. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Uh, say the process of elimination. The process of elimination is something uh, the, the devil knows that we need uh, to overcome. He knows that uh, we are wrestling with something, but it's not just physically, it's spiritually. Ephesians 10 and 12 and John 10 and 10, 10 says, it makes it clear that the devil, uh, he has an agenda to destroy. However, the story of Job reminds us that his abilities are limited. Somebody ought to give God some praise. <laughs> his abilities are limited and his activities are restricted. What are you talking about? That I'm telling you today that Satan power uh, uh, cannot prevail over you. It does not have the power over your mind. It does not have the power over your sickness. It does not have the power over your welfare because he has no power over a child in the kingdom. Uh, I, I want to introduce something for, for uh, just for your hearing just for a minute uh, and I want to talk about self-sabotage. Somebody say self-sabotage. Jesus, self-sabotage, it, it, it is something, it is the trick uh, that the enemy used. It starts in our minds and it would cause us to doubt the word of God. It would cause us to doubt the possibility that I'm going to be successful, that I'm going to be ahead and not uh, beneath, above and not beneath. It, 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 it makes us doubt our abilities, hallelujah, to be who God has called us to be. But somebody said, I thank God for grace. I thank God for grace. Uh, the trick of self-sabotage leads us to a place where we would examine who we are and we will keep ourselves from moving into the area that God wants us to go in. It's interesting that uh, even though we are born again Christians and, and, and we repent daily, I know I do, 
uh, the enemy uses our past trials to somewhat predict how we're going to react to a situation. He uses these things. He uses that time we had an attitude with our parents. He uses that time that uh, uh, we cussed somebody out. He uses that time uh, when we were sinners. He uses that, and he tries to control our movement. But the Bible tells us that uh, uh, even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I won't feel no evil. We have to remember that God has given us all the tools we need in the inside of us. Thank you, Jesus. Uh, uh, Isaiah, the 40, 41st chapter of uh, verse number 10, it says, Fear not, for I am with thee. Be not dismayed, for I will strengthen thee and I will help thee. I will uphold thee with my right hand of righteousness. It says, Fear not. Here it is. Fear is a part of the enemy's process to try to get us to eliminate ourselves. Fear is that strong thing that mixes our emotions uh, with our attitude. Fear introduces something uh, uh, that we don't need in our lives. Now, it's true that fear is natural. Fear is natural. It's natural, but yet we, we don't pause and sit in it and take note of why we're being fearful. But, but, but David said it like this. He said, I sought the Lord, and he heard me, and he delivered me out of all my fears. Are you seeking God in the midst of your fears? Or are you letting yourselves to be consumed with fear? Let's, let's, let's look at that. He said, I sought the Lord. And he heard me and delivered me. Deliverance is a pulling out. It's a, it's a plucking. It's, it's, it's something we use in the church uh, that we, we like to say to cast the devil out. But deliverance is actually a motion in which we change. That's where change comes about. In your deliverance. Not everybody is going to get the up and out experience. Some of us, uh, we're going to get the deliverance of the word of knowledge uh, when we're studying in the word of God and say, oh, I didn't know that. And then God is going to introduce uh, such a knowledge to you that you're going to change. You're going to walk away from habits. You're going to walk away from confusion. David also said, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will feel no evil, for thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. I like to look at that word staff, S-T-A-F-F, -F, as like a staff. Uh, if you ever go to a fast food restaurant, you will see that they have people working a cash register, they have people cleaning up, they have people working the grill. It, it's fully staffed. I, I, I want to introduce you for, for a few moments, uh, uh, God's staff. God's staff that employs us to use the Holy Ghost. God's staff which employ us to be better than what we used to be. The staff of God in which I'm talking about, I'm talking about his grace. When you know that you have a staff full of grace, now, now our pastor is the apostle of grace and he, nobody breaks it down better than him, but I, I'm not even going to attempt, but grace, his grace is sufficient. What is it about grace you like? Well, yeah, I'm glad you asked because in the process of elimination, you must first understand that because of God's grace, you can freely operate into your kingdom authority into who God is calling you to be. The staff of grace not only goes with grace, but somebody say mercy. Mercy is something that we don't have for ourselves because we're too busy trying to compete with her. We're too busy trying to compete with them and do it like they do it. But mercy allow you to apply to yourself and trust God process to get you from A to B. We're not all going to be able to move into the areas of Apostle Matthew Stevenson. We're not going to be able to move into the areas of Apostle Juanita Bynum's. We're not going to all. It takes time to develop into that. So don't act like you got it like that and you don't want it how they got it. So mercy allows us to walk in truth. 
Mercy allows us uh, to hang on in there to see what the end is going to be. Uh, can I also introduce uh, another part of the staff uh, that God sometimes wants us uh, to use, but we don't? Somebody say faith. <laughs> Somebody yell faith again. Faith is a part of you that we don't tend to use because our situations will introduce something to us that tells us that you don't need the faith. It's funny to me that we are so fearful of COVID-19. We're fearful of the vaccination. We're fearful uh, to do what we need to do, but yet we're not afraid to go to Walmart. We're not afraid to go to the gas station. We're not afraid to go to brunch. I know you're on your way to brunch. We're not afraid of these things, but we are afraid to come in the house of God. The Bible says, forsake not the assembly of the saints. Where are you now? In your seek to Christ. Where are you now? Because you've allowed that fear uh, to take care of where your faith needs to take care of. Uh, I also uh, want to just for a second ask you, are you praying? Are you praying? The Bible teaches us that our weapons of warfare are not carnal, but they are mighty through the pulling down of strongholds. Strongholds are the things in which keeps us from being who God has called us to be. I'm telling you this because I know I've been in the process of eliminations. We have to eliminate our ego. We have to eliminate pride. We have to eliminate fear. We have to eliminate all of these things because it draws up a red flag. You ever been involved in a situation and say, uh-uh, that's a red flag. You ever been riding down 285 and see the traffic? Oh, let me get off right here. Because I don't want to sit in this traffic. Let me find another route. Map Quest, give me another route. We tend to turn away from going through uh, to somewhat give us gratification. We, as Christians, walk away from the process of sitting in it. <laughs> Sometimes it's necessary for us to sit in it. What you're talking about, Elder? Sometimes it is good for us to sit in our mistakes. Do you hear me, Jason? It's, it's necessary because that part of failure will introduce to us correction. It will introduce to us a part of our life uh, that we need to observe. And a lot of times as Christians, we don't sit in stuff long enough because we're so ready. God, take me out, deliver me. Oh, I can't do it. I can't do it. Boom, you running. You run. And then you haven't learned what you need to learn from going through this trial. And so it's going to be like a cycle. It's going to repeat itself. You're going to say, Lord, now I just went through this. I, I just got this job. Now I'm getting fired again. Now I, got, I, I just, I'm, I'm the same relationship, Father. It's, it just keep coming back. What is it about this that I'm doing, Father, that you're trying to get something out of me? Uh, we, we have to start to reflect on the cost of self-sabotizing behavior. Self-sabotizing behavior is something uh, that we grow in. You just did not become mean and nasty and ugly overnight. Something happens to you uh, that makes you want to be mean, make you want to be hateful. It makes you uh, don't want to uh, care about how you're responding to uh, your coworkers. It makes you uh, uh, not understand why God is calling you higher. Uh, 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 why do we run, Elder Oliver? A lot of us run uh, because we are shameful. Shameful. We are very shameful of, of, of life. We're shameful that we were sinners. We were shameful that uh, you practiced something that you didn't have nobody, no business doing. You were shameful that you smoked weed. You're shameful that your husband left you. You're shameful that she cheated on you. So she, you're shameful. Shamefulness is a part of our natural human buildup. It, it's, it, it's a part of us. But being shameful, uh, uh, in Romans the 8th chapter, it says, There is therefore now no condemnation 
to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. But walk after the spirit. How am I going to walk after the spirit when I'm, I'm introduced to this and that and I'm carrying the loads of many? What do you mean you're, I'm carrying the loads? You're carrying uh, your fears from your mom. She did not want you to uh, get introduced to uh, that type of relationship. You're carrying the fears. Uh, uh, this thing is generational, so it, it's trickling down. It started with your grandparents and their grandparents. It's trickling down, but you have the ability to break the curse, to break that generational curse he says it says therefore now no condemnation and so when you know that the word of God is talking about you somebody see he is talking about me that you should not walk not after the flesh but after the spirit I, I, I want to introduce something else to you uh, and it's a word called procrastination we procrastinate on doing what God has called us to do. Now, we're still talking about the process of elimination, but you got to knock out this procrastination. You were supposed to start the job. You were supposed to start the career. You were supposed to file for uh, your LLC, but uh, uh, look at you. You're trapped. You're, you're trapped because uh, now the money is running low. Now you're looking at how you're going to pay this and how you're going to pay that, but you already been on your vacation. <laughs> Procrastination will cause us as saints miss the blessing from God because we're not where we should be in life. You ever examine yourself and say, I, I really should be ahead than where I am right now. But because of self-inflicted wounds, self-sabotizing, you, you didn't want to do it. You, you didn't want to move forward. You didn't, did not want to step out on faith and pursue what God is calling you to do. Procrastination will sometimes uh, make us carry stuff that we don't need to carry. Erica Badu uh, wrote, well, she sung the song called Bag Lady. Bag Lady. Y'all know the song? <laughs> Bag Lady. I'm going to read some of the lyrics to you. It's a Bag lady, you gonna miss your bus carrying all them bags like this. Look, and then it says, I know someone never told you. All you must hold on to is you, is you, and you. That's interesting that a, a, a song that is meant to minister to the world can minister to us in the church. How many of you are carrying bags? How many of you are carrying hurt? How many of you are carrying the pain of failure? How many of you are carrying that hang up? How many of you are carrying what God told you to let go? I know because I've carried many bags of my life. It stopped me from moving on to being uh, the best man that I could be for myself. It caused years of struggling and struggling with doubt and defeat, doubt and defeat. Now, I know some of you are looking at me like, yes, that's impossible. I know some of your, are your most influenceable Instagram, Facebook people that are literally dying spiritually. We make life look so good. We can dress it up, but many people are dying spiritually. Because they have forfeit their rights to be in the kingdom. Because they have forfeit their rights uh, to be who God has really called them to be. And so we struggle with this thing and because it's called procrastination. The Bible teaches us that we should discipline ourselves. You got to start disciplining yourself. You, you have to start taking care of yourself. Taking care of your responsibilities. Taking care... Is this mic on? Taking care of what God has given you authority over. And that first starts with yourself. Raise your hand and say, I'm going to take better care of myself. Say, I'm going to take better care of myself. Uh, by partnering with the Holy Spirit. Partnering with the Holy Spirit uh, takes us to a place that we have to make a decision. That we make a decision. Once we make the decision, we will begin to walk out 
the process of elimination. We will begin to be around the people that mean us well. We will begin uh, to serve where we <laughs> are appreciated. Am I talking to somebody in here? Uh, sometimes as Christians, uh, we don't understand the key to winning. Winning. We don't understand the key to success because we don't want to submit to the process. We run. We don't sit in it. We allow uh, the enemy to tell, tell us that uh, you're not the one. You're not qualified. It's not your time. Well, I come to serve notice today. It is your time. It is your time. Come on, say it with me today. Say it is my time to be what God has called me to be. It is my time to be successful. It is my time to be above and not beneath. It is my time to serve the enemy notice that no weapon that has been formed against me will not prosper. Now give God some praise for what you're about to do. Come on, you can do better than that. Give God some praise. Uh, it, it, this brings me to my very last point, and it's, it's called trusting in God. Somebody say trust in God. Uh, trust in the Lord with all thy heart. Lean not to thy own understanding, but in all thy ways acknowledge him. How can I trust him when I'm broke? How can I trust him when I'm sick? How can I trust them when I'm weak? How can I trust them? I'm still waiting on the last blessing to hit me that the prophet prophesied to me. I've been looking. I wake up looking for it. You're looking for it, but the Bible says faith without works is dead. You have to learn to apply the word that's been preached and prophesied to your life that you're, it's actively in your life. Well, how can I work this thing out? They told me that I, I was going to be a millionaire. Well, have you started working on your credit? See, it's the, it's the simple things that can help expedite what we're supposed to be doing. All right, trust in the Lord. Now, lean not to thy own understanding. Your mind does not have the capacity to understand that God is a miracle worker. Because if you truly understood it, then once every time you wake up, you would wake up expecting a miracle. You would wake up expecting a breakthrough. You would wake up expecting that your, your family is going to be delivered. You would wake up expecting that a way is going to be made out of no way. Proverbs, the third chapter, tells us, in all thy ways acknowledge him, and he will direct thy path no matter where you're going he, he's going to direct you he's literally going to put people right before you to bless you he's he's literally planning your escape out of that failure he's planning your escape out of that job he's planning your escape but what are you waiting on why haven't you started to praise him why are you not praising God for what's about to happen why are you allowing the enemy uh, 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 to trick you by looking at your bank account every morning waiting on another stimulus check? You're self-sabotaging who God wants you to be. It says, blessed is the man that trusts in the Lord and whose hope is in the Lord. For he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water. Have you ever seen a tree by the river? I mean the wind blowing, but it's not going anywhere. I mean it rocks and shakes, but it's, it's standing on a solid ground. Its roots grow deep and wide and into the earth. It is planted by the rivers of the water that shall not be moved. The Bible teaches us that uh, if we are going to be Christians, then we have to be who we say we are. We have to hold on our failures, on our mistakes, on our failures, on our mistakes. We have to own this thing. What you mean, Elder? You have to, hey, I did it. I made a mistake. I don't have to write a Facebook post about it. <laughs> I don't have to uh, uh, do what you want me to do 
But guess what? I'm going to own this. It's a hard pill to swallow, Mother Betty, but I'm going to own it. And guess what I'm going to do? I'm going to swallow it. I'm going to sit in it. And I'm going to allow it <laughs> to process. I'm going to allow it to process. I'm going to process this pain. I'm going to process this failure. I'm going to process this hate. My God. For we walk by faith, not by sight. We walk by faith and not by sight. We have a responsibility to be who God has called us to be, but yet we don't move in it. We allow failure, pain, and I, and I keep touching on it because I, I feel like that's what God is saying. But we allow this, this thing to just keep us handicapped. We're waiting on a handout. We're waiting for somebody to push us. We're waiting for somebody to uh, get us from A to B. But God is saying, you got the power. You can do it. You can get through this. I, 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 I want, for the sake of time, to uh, just re-examine uh, uh, what Ephesians says, it says, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rules of darkness, against spiritual wickedness in high places, in high places, the high place of your mind. It's, it's over your thoughts. It's over your thought patterns. Some of you have uh, daydreams and, uh, about failure. You, you, the enemy is really tormenting you. Thank you, Jesus. But I come to introduce to you today that this is a new season and that the fear of not moving on, the fear of it's going to be how it used to be, the fear of, of not allowing God's grace to be sufficient for you, it's over. We're going to trust the process of elimination. Come on, everybody stand on your feet all over the house. And those of you that are at home, I ask you just to put your phones down. Thank you, Jesus. Uh, turn your volume up. We're going to do a little intercession. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Put your hand over your head. Father, we ask that you would touch our minds. We ask that you would touch our thoughts, touch our ability to think, touch our ability to be able to process the thought of being healed for real. We're tired of this battling with the mind of this identity crisis that some of us is in. For you have not given us the spirit of confusion. You're not the author of it. So we ask that you would touch our minds so that our positive thinking mindset would manifest. Thank you, Jesus. Father, we ask that you would forgive us for thinking negative thoughts about ourselves. Forgive us for allowing laziness that cause stumbling blocks in our lives to where we would not get up and do what you've called us to do. That we would not do a regular regimen of self-care. Touch our minds, 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 touch our minds. Thank you, Jesus. Now put your hand on your belly. Father, we lay our hands on our belly and we command the rivers to flow. Flow rivers, rivers of living water. We command you to flow out of our lawns. We command you to flow. Gifts of the spirits flow. We command it to flow. Flow love, love over hate. Love, flow love, love. You said that you'll give us beauty for our ashes. Flow love. Flow love. Flow mercy. Flow mercy. Mercy, 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 mercy. Mercy. Mercy, 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 
mercy. Thank you, Jesus. Father, we, we pray right now for the offender. The murderer needs you. The one who inflicted the wounds needs you. The liar needs you. The backslider needs you. So we ask that they would flow into our mercy. That in your mercy they are forgiven. They are forgiven. We forgive them. We forgive them. We forgive them. We forgive them. We won't carry this hate anymore. We won't carry this confusion anymore. We, we forgive them. We forgive them. It's keeping us from moving forward. We forgive them. We forgive them. We forgive them now. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. And we praise you for it. We praise you for it. Come on, give God some praise for walking into the knowledge of his truth. For stirring the rivers of living water. Come on, give God some praise for it. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, let's just worship him. Come on, just worship him. Come on, just worship him. We worship you. We worship you. We worship you. We worship you. Yes, we worship you. We worship you. We worship you in the spirit. We worship you in the truth. That's what we're gonna do. Into the holies of holies. That's where I want to be. Into the holies of holies. That's where I want to be. Come on, we worship you. We worship you in the spirit. Come on, all over this place, sing it. Even in your homes. We worship you, Jesus. We worship you in the spirit. And that's what I want to do. That's what we're going to do. Can you take me into the holies of holies? The holies I'm picking of back holies. up my prayer mantle. I know you've been waking me up in the middle of the night and I've avoided the call. I've avoided the cry. But Father, I'm going back to the place. I'm going back to my altar. I'm going to remove all these things I put before you. I'm going to remove, I'm going to take my time back from social media. I'm going to take my time back. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. We worship you in the Spirit. That's what we're going to do. Thank you, Jesus. 